In this section, we will learn about the process of elongation during translation. As we saw in the initiation stage, extra protein factors are required for the process of elongation. They are known as elongation factors, or EFs in the prokaryotic system, and EEFs in the eukaryotic system. You can see that there is not the same variability in elongation factors between prokaryotic and eukaryotic systems as there was with the initiation phase. Here we will focus mainly on the process of prokaryotic elongation, although we will take a brief look at the eukaryotic system as well. The prokaryotic elongation phase of transcription requires the activity of three primary elongation factors, or EFs. EF2, EFTS, and EFG. During the elongation phase, aminoacyl tRNAs are delivered to the ribosome in the form of a ternary complex. The tRNA, the elongation factor, or translational GTPase, in bacteria this is EF2, or cell B, and a GTP molecule. In the figure here, the action of EF2 is shown. Essentially, EF2 is a GTP hydrolase enzyme that binds with aminoacyl tRNAs and chaperones the aminoacyl tRNA to the A site of the ribosome. This causes the hydrolysis of GTP to GDP and a phosphate group and the release of the EF2 cofactor. Structural studies have shown detailed interaction between the anticodon of the tRNA with the codon of the messenger RNA. This is shown here on the left. This binding interaction is facilitated by the ribosomal RNA residues A1492, A1493, and G530 that can shift and adopt a flipped out conformation. When a cognate tRNA docks into the A site, the rRNA residues are included in the cognate binding on the right-hand side. The stable hydrogen bonding of the tRNA with the messenger RNA is required to cause the flipped-out conformation of the ribosomal RNA. This helps to ensure that the correct tRNA docks into the A site. Interestingly, aminoglycosides, a class of antibiotics, binds to the decoding center and locks nucleotides A1492 and A1493 in the flipped out conformation. In this way, aminoglycosides promote the accommodation of near cognate and thus the wrong tRNAs into the proteins during synthesis causing widespread mutagenesis. This is toxic to the bacteria and leads to bacterial cell death. As we noted previously, EF2 is required to chaperone the aminoacyl tRNA to the A site of the ribosome, where GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP and inorganic phosphate. The hydrolysis of GTP causes the EF2 chaperone to be released from the complex and leave the ribosome. Once EF2 is released from the ribosome, it exists in a state that is bound to GDP, and it needs to be reactivated to the form that is docked with GTP. The binding of EF2 with GDP to EFTS causes EF2 to release the GDP and bind with a new molecule of GTP. The binding of GTP causes a conformational change in the complex and causes the release of the EFTS cofactor. EF2 is then recharged with another molecule of GTP and it combined with another aminoacyl tRNA molecule and repeat the chaperone process. And now back to the ribosome. Once an aminoacyl tRNA is docked into the A site, it can interact with the nascent peptide or the initiator tRNA if this is the first round and form a peptide bond. Recall that peptide bond formation 
occurs in the N to C direction during peptide synthesis. This is due to the structure of the ribosome. The amine functional group of the amino acid that's held in the A site mediates attack on the carbonyl carbon of the amino acid held to the tRNA in the P site. This causes the formation of an oxyanion intermediate, followed by the release of the tRNA in the P site. The peptide bond has then formed, and the peptide is transferred to the tRNA that is in the A site. During one round of amino acid elongation on the nascent peptide, the EF2 protein binds with the cognate aminoacyl tRNA molecule and shuttles it to the A site of the ribosome. GTP hydrolysis by EF2 leads to the hybridization of the anticodon of the tRNA with the codon of the messenger RNA. N causes the dissociation of the EF2, which is now GDP bound, from the ribosome. Following the dissociation of EF2, the peptide bond is formed, leading to the transfer of the nascent peptide from the tRNA in the P site to the tRNA that's in the A site. Peptide bond formation leads to a conformational change in the ribosome that allows the binding of the EFG protein when it is bound to GTP. This is near the A site of the ribosome. Rapid hydrolysis of GTP by the EFG protein causes a large conformational shift in the protein that twists the large subunit of the ribosome and shifts the bound tRNAs from the A site to the P site and from the P site to the E site, where the empty tRNA can exit the ribosome. This shifting is called translocation. So at the end of one round of elongation, the ribosome has to translocate down the messenger RNA to place the next codon sequence into the A site. The EFG elongation factor plays a role in this process. During translocation, EFG binds to the A site of the ribosome. The EFG is also a GTP hydrolase and uses the energy of hydrolysis to create a power stroke that folds the EFG protein and causes this conformational change in the ribosome, enabling the translocation of the messenger RNA. The top diagram shows the ribosome in a pre-translocation state with the tRNA in the A site and the P site, shown in green and brown. The right-hand diagram shows the ribosome rotated 90 degrees, so you have a different view of it. The lower diagram shows the conformational movement that occurs during the translocation process. The L1 stock, which is a flexible part of the large subunit and is shown in purple, is in contact and moves along with the tRNA from the P to the E site. Once in the EFG GDP form, the factor quickly dissociates from the ribosome, opening up the A site for recruitment of the next aminoacyl tRNA molecule. The elongation cycle will continue to be repeated until a termination codon is reached. Eukaryotic elongation is very similar to prokaryotic elongation. Eukaryotic GTPase enzymes are also required. Similar to prokaryotic systems, the first GTPase is required to chaperone the incoming aminoacyl tRNA to the A site of the ribosome. The second GTPase is used in the translocation process to shift the aminoacyl tRNA from the A site to the P site and move the ribosome down the messenger RNA transcript, opening it up to the next round of elongation. The empty tRNA shifts from the P site to the E site where it exits the ribosome. 
This cycle will continue until a termination codon is reached. In the next lecture, we will focus on the process of translation termination.